Good morning. Welcome to our Sunday School, March 20, 2022. The title of our Sunday School lesson, Free to Celebrate. This is lesson number three of the third quarter. Background scripture is Ezra chapter 6, 13 to 22. Last week, it was also Ezra chapter 6, but it's 1 to 12. The Sunday school material that we are using, Standard Lesson Commentary 2021-2022. Let's start with the prayer. Lord, we will be studying the dedication, the celebration of the temple that was rebuilt by those who return to, from exile. Be with us, Lord, in our Sunday school. Help us so that we will understand your lesson for us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so you're at a glance. Those were our theme in the first and second quarter. Today, we are in the third quarter, covering the months of March, April, and May. Quarter at a glance. So what are we going to study in this quarter? This quarter's scriptures address themes of true freedom in God, the power of memory, the significance of right belief, the role of responsibility, the theme for the month of uh, March, memory and freedom. As ancient Israel remembered their liberation from Egypt, the memory reinforced the nature of their relationship with God. Yung pag ala ng Israel, ng palayain sila mula sa slavery. Also, we see the Lord Moses reminding us, uh, reminding them that God's blessing will be great. Marami silang blessings. But that is if they will obey God's laws. This is for the month of April, right belief and freedom. So it mentions here Jesus' triumphal entry show how the world had certain expectation of freedom. Ano bang expectation ng mga tao? Doon sa nakita nilang triumphal entry ni Jesus Iniisip nila na magkakaroon nga ng kingdom, katulad ng kingdom ni King David. However, Jesus was talking of another kingdom. And it will be established by His resurrection. And then, in the, the month of May, this will be our same responsible freedom. Sabi dito, through the Spirit, Christians live free and responsible lives, expressing the fullness of their Spirit in their actions. There is a responsibility. Because of the presence of the Holy Spirit, we will be able to do the right thing towards our fellow man. Responsible freedom. So uh, these are the lessons for the month of March. We are now in the lesson number three. Free to celebrate. These will be the lessons for April and the lessons for May. Let's go through the scripture that we are going to analyze. Ezra chapter 6, 13 to 22. This is a continuation 
Last Sunday, it was Ezra 6, 1 to 12. So, continuation 13. Then, because of the decree King Darius had sent, Tatinai, governor of Trans Euphrates, Euphrates, and Shetar Businai and their associates carried out with diligence. So the elders of the Jews continued to build and prosper under the preaching of Haggai, the prophet, and Zechariah, a descendant of Ido. They finished building the temple according to the, demand, to the command of the God of Israel and the decrees of Cyrus, Darius, and Artaxerxes, kings of Persia. The temple was completed on the third day of the month of Adar, in the sixth year of the reign of King Darius. Then the people of Israel, the priests, the Levites, and the rest of the exiles, celebrated the dedication of the house of God with joy. For the dedication of this house of God, they offered 100 bulls, 200 rams, 400 male lambs, and as a sin offering for all Israel, 12 male goats, one for each of the tribes of Israel. And they installed the priests in their divisions, and the Levites in their groups for the service of God at Jerusalem, according to what is written in the book of Moses. On the 14th day of the first month, the exiles celebrated the Passover. The priests and the Levites had purified themselves and were all ceremonially clean. The Levites slaughtered the Passover lamb for all the exiles, for their relatives, the priests, and for themselves. So the Israelites who had returned from the exile ate it together with all who had separated themselves from the unclean practices of their Gentile neighbors in order to seek the Lord, the God of Israel. For seven days, they celebrated with joy the festival of unleavened bread, because the Lord had filled them with joy by changing the attitude of the king of Assyria so that he assisted them in the work on the house of God, the God of Israel. Sa Tagalog, ang pagtatalaga sa templo. Lahat ng iniutos ni Haring Dario ay sinunod ni na Tatnay, si Tar Busnay, at ng kanilang mga kagawad. Pinagpatuloy ng mga Hudyo ang muling pagtatayo sa templo at sila'y nagtagumpay tulad ng sinabi ni na Propeta Agio at Sakaryas, nayari nilang templo ayon sa sinabi ng Diyos at sa utos ni Naharing Siro, Dario at Artaherhes. At nayari no ikatlo ng Adar, ikaanim na taon ng paghahari ni Haring Dario. Nang itinalagang templo, di magkamayaw sa tuwa ang mga Israelita, mga saserdote, at mga libitang nakabalik mula sa pagkabihag. Nagandog sila ng isang daang toro, dalawang daang tupang lalaki, at apat na raang kordero. Bilang hain naman para sa kasalanan, nagandog sila ng labing dalawang kambing na lalaki, isa sa bawat lipi ng Israel. Pinagpangkat-pangkat nila ang mga saserdote at mga libita, Sila'y binigyan ng kanilang gawain at araw ng panunungkulan sa templo ayon sa kautusan ni Moises. At nai kalabing apat ng unang buwan, ipinagdiwang ng mga nakabalik mula sa pagkabihag ang Paskwa. Nakapaglinis na noon ang mga libita kaya sila ang nagpatay sa kordirong pang Paskwa para sa mga nakabalik sa mga saserdote at sa mga kapwa nila, Levita. Ito ay pinagsalusaluhan nila, pati ng mga Israelitang lumayo na sa pagsamba sa diyos at nakisama na sa kanila sa pagsamba kay Yahweh. 
Buong galak din nilang ipinagdiwang ang pitong araw ng pista ng tinapay na walang libadura. Hindi magkamayaw ang kanilang katuwaan pagkat ni Loob ni Yahweh na sila'y tulungan ng hari ng Assyria sa pagtatayo ng templo. Kitex, Ezra 6.16 The people of Israel, the priests, the Levites, and the rest of the exiles celebrated the dedication of the house of God with joy. Okay, lesson aims. What should we learn? Number one, state the emotion that characterized the celebrations of Passover and unleavened bread. Sabi rito, isalarawan natin ano ang mga naramdaman nung mga tao nung kanilang i-celebrate ang Passover at saka yung unleavened bread. Anong klaseng kasayahan, anong klaseng katuwaan ang naramdaman nila? Number two, compare and contrast the dedication of the second temple with that of the first. Yan. Dapat, kaya nating i-compare ang uh, celebration doon dito sa second temple at saka yung first temple, yung first kings, 862, noong i-dedicate ni Haring Solomon yung templo matapos itong uh, gawin ni Haring Solomon. So isasalarawan natin, iahambing natin, ikukumpara natin yung klase ng dedication. Suggest and help plan a church-wide celebration to commemorate an occasion of God's provision and faithfulness. Yan. So, paano tayo makakatulong? Ano kaya yung church-wide celebration na meron tayo? Eh, Siyempre, ang unang pumapasok sa atin dyan, eh, pagka inaalaala natin yung church uh, anniversary. Yan. That, is a, that is an occasion of God's provision. Ilang taon na tayo dito at nasa atin pa rin ang Diyos. That is an occasion to celebrate. Okay, so lesson outline, introduction, the challenge of joy, and lesson context. Yung verse 13 to 18, it is about obedient dedication. Roman numeral number one. Roman numeral number two, celebrate, celebratory fellowship. Verse 19 to 22. Then the conclusion, building a joyful community. Okay, introduction, the challenge of joy. Ito ay kinukwento ng writer ng ating uh, Sunday School. In 1936, the German theologian Dietrich Bonhoeffer established and taught a, at a secret seminary. Ayan. Saan ito? Doon sa Finkenwaldi, Poland. Ayan. Theologian Bonhoeffer, anong ginawa niya? Siya ay nagtayo ng seminary, secret seminary. Bakit? Bakit secret? Ha, ang mangyari, sabi rito, merong state-supported church. Yung seminary na ginagawa niya ay iba doon sa state-supported church. Merong sinusuportahan ng gobyerno na church at hindi yung kanya. So, risky, delikado. Pag nahuli sila, eh, eh, siyempre, pasasarang seminary, yung leaders, eh, pakukulong. Yun ang, ka, yun ang delikado. So, despite the risk, Bonhoeffer held this to his convictions, held to his conviction that the seminary was crucial. Delikado. Pero nanindigan siya. Kaya nakailangan. Yun ang nasa isip niya. On the verge of a worldwide, worldwide crisis, the seminary developed church leaders. So, 19, ano yun, 1939, 1936, nakadevelop siya ng mga leaders. 
church leaders doon sa seminary. Bonhoeffer taught on the Old Testament text of Ezra. He taught, he thought that the text offered a model faithfulness to God during times of crisis. Yun yung kanyang tinuturo. Itong pinag-aaralin natin ngayon, yung Ezra. Dahil, yun ang tinuro niya, bakit? Sa kaisipan niya. Sa kaisipan niya. Ito ang tamang uh, ituro sa, sa panahon ng crisis. Bakit? Eh, malapit na magkagera. So, doon sa panahon na yon kinakailangan na ituro ang katapatan ng Diyos sa kanyang pangako. God is faithful to His promise. During difficult times, hope that the promise of God will remain true. Yan eh. Diba? Sa panahon ng uh, krisis, kayang-kaya nating tanghawakan ang pangako ng Diyos. The promises of God will remain true. Yun yung tinuturo nitong si Bonhoeffer dun sa seminary, yung Book of Ezra. The hope is evident no matter the time period, whether post-exilic Israel or the pre-war or today. This hope, yung pag-asa, yung katapatan ng salita ng Diyos, pwede nating panghawakan yan kahit nasa ang panahon. Doon sa pagkatapos yung mga ma-exile, bumalik sila yung panahon ng pre-war sa Europe o ngayong araw, ngayong panahon natin. Maging sa panahon ng pandemic, we can hold on on the promise of God. Lesson context. Ayan, malikan natin yung istorya nitong lesson natin. The resettled Jewish exiles under Zerubbabel's leadership rebuilt the foundation. Yun. Itong si Zerubbabel, Zerubbabel, siya yung leader, siya yung governor noong ginagawa nila yung foundation. Foundation pa lang yung ginagawa nila, foundation ng templo. That is in Ezra chapter 3. After the work began, Persian officials questioned yun, doon sa chapter 5. Naumpisan na pero natigil. Bakit? Kino-question ngayon ng mga Persian officials, yung mga governor, yung mga governor doon sa paligid ng Judah. Kino-question ang nagbigay sa inyo ng authority. Okay, so sumulat sila kay Haring Darius. Haring Darius na ang, ang, ang hari noon. And anong ginawa ni Haring Darius doon sa mga previous lessons natin? Hinanap niya yung mga decree ni Haring Cyrus. Yung decree na yon, yun yung pinapayagan na ni Haring Cyrus yung mga exile na bumalik doon sa Judah, doon sa Jerusalem. On what purpose? To build the temple. Okay? And then, ano pa yung lesson? Nakita natin. Ito naman yung continuation. Continuation ng decree ni King Cyrus. Ito naman si King Darius. Ay, gumawa rin siya ng decree. Continuation to financially support the reconstruction. Mayroon silang yung mga gastos ay sasagutin ng gobyerno. Sasagutin ng gobyerno ng Persia. So, saan mang gagaling yung suporta doon sa mga nakapaligid na provinces, the taxes that they will that they will collect, part of that will go to the reconstruction of the temple in Jerusalem. Lahat, mga ginto na kailangan, mga hayop na kailangan, lahat, mga kahoy na kailangan, lahat ipuprovide ng gobyerno. Kailangan uh, provide ng gobyerno. Yan ang decree ni King Darius. The temple marked the place where God's presence was with His people. Yun, yun yung, ano yung importansya ng templo? Dahil dun sa templo, 
doon nararamdaman, nakikita ng Israel yung presensya ng Diyos. The glory of God is there. Uh, the glory of God is there. But if, malaking malaking if, Israel will to disobey God, the presence would leave. Wala na yung glory of God to. Ah, alis na. Yun yung malaking if. You can read that in Ezekiel. Now, the building had to be dedicated to signify His holiness. Merong dedication. Kinakailangan ito to signify His holiness. Previously, Temple of Solomon's time underwent the same. So, ano yung ginagawa dun sa dedication? Ito yung pag-aaralan natin ngayon. Sacrifices were offered and God's people celebrated His goodness. May mga, may mga animals na gagawing sacrifice. Sacrifices. At ang mga tao ay magsasaya. Yun yung mangyayari doon sa dedication. Verse 13. Ito na tayo ngayon. So yun yung, yun yung background. Ito na, verse 13. Then because of the decree of King Darius had sent Tatinai, governor of trans and Chitar, Busnai, and their associates carried out with diligence. Walang magagawa yung governor. Eh, ang boss nila, yung hari. Sino yung hari nila? King Darius. Anong sabi ni King Darius? Oy, tulungan nyo yan. Bigyan nyo ng pera. Huwag nyo pakikialaman yung mga leader nila. Okay? Previous opposition of the exiles dissipated. Because of the patronage shown by the king. Ano ba bakit kaya ginagawa ng hari ito? May pakinabang ba? Pinapaliwanag dito yung patronage. It's a socio-economic relationship between a benefactor and a and may client. May benefactor, may client. Mayroong nagpo-provide, mayroong client. What is a, what is the relationship? Ah, uh, The pro-benefactor provide materials, financial <coughs> support. The client, in return, pledge loyalty to the benefactor. Yan. So, benefactor, siya magpo-provide ng gamit. Yung mga client ay nag, nanunumpa naman sila ng allegiance. They pledge loyalty. Kumbaga, Itong mga to hindi sila magre-rebel dito sa hari. It is a reciprocal relationship. Bigayan lang, o bigyan kita, pero in return, eh, loyal ka sa akin. So in this example, Darius served as the benefactor para walang uh, uprising, etc. In return, walang uprising dahil they pledge loyalty. Verse 14, So the elders of the Jews continued to build and prosper under the preaching of Haggai, the prophet, and Zechariah, a descendant of Ido. Yan. So, in-introduce ngayon, doon sa paggawa, sa kanilang paggawa, lumabas itong mga Haggai, propetang Haggai, propetang Zechariah, nagpipreach sila. Bakit? Yan, bakit? Take note of this. Nagumpisa yung construction 536 BC. Natigil, natigil. Bakit? Because the work did stop due to opposition. Dahil nga dun sa kanina yung mga nag-oppose. So nagkawatak-watak ulit ang mga tao dahil sa opposition ng mga governor surrounding Jerusalem, surrounding Judah. And then because of King Darius decree nag Nag-umpisa ulit, you know, nagpatuloy sa so 536 B.C., tinuloy ulit ng 520 B.C. Yan. The repatriated exiles and the elders and Jews continued in the rebuilding. However, they would prosper in this only as they followed preaching of prophets. Ganito kasi yung senaryo. Hindi naman madali yung gumawa. Dahil uh, ang mga tao ay malalayo ang lugar nila doon sa templo. So, there will be an encouragement 
continuing encouragement coming from the two prophets, si Haggai at si Zechariah. Decades after the events of Ezra, Jerusalem was, was sparse. Malalayo yung mga tao dun sa Jerusalem. For a time, the exiles avoided the work. Medyo kailangan talaga ng dedication. So, yung trabaho ni Propeta Hagay and later on, yung si Propeta Sekaraya, ang trabaho nila ay ipalaala continually kung bakit kinakailangan nilang tapusin ang templo. Palaala palagi na kailangan nila dahil yun ang iniuutos ng Diyos na sinasabi nila na kinakailangan nating uling ma-experiensya ang presensya ng Diyos. Yun yung trabaho nila. God is faithful. He will be with us. Continuing. Ano yung sinasabi ni Sikaraya? Do, ano yung sinesermo ni Sikaraya? Sabi ni Sikaraya, huwag niyong tularin yung mga ninuno ninyo. Ano bang ginawa ng mga ninuno nila? But they did not hear nor hearken unto me. Ayaw nilang makinig sa salita ng Diyos. Tumalikot sila sa salita ng Diyos. Anong ginawa ng Diyos? Pinarusahan sila. So, si Sikaraya, nire-remind niya yung mga tao. Pagpatuloy natin ito, huwag tayong tumulad doon sa mga magulang natin. Okay, example. Ito ay uh, exceptional example. Uh, kwento ito ng author. Millard Fuller, self-made millionaire, pero sabi niya, may kulang sa buhay ko. So itong si Millard at saka yung asawa niya, mga milyonaryo sila, binenta nila yung kanilang mga ari-arian. And they went somewhere else. And then later on, bumalik sila and they started a housing ministry. Ang tawag doon sa kanilang housing ministry ay Habitat for Humanity. Sila yung nagumpisa nito. Itong si, ang pangalan nito, Fuller, uh, Millard Fuller, and Linda Fuller. Yun simpisa nila. Habitat for Humanity. Ano ba yung Habitat of Humanity? Habitat of Humanity is an NGO, non-profit organization that help people in your community. So, ibig sabihin, all around the world ngayon yan. For to improve a place they can call a home. Wow! So, ito yung example nitong mag-asawang ito. The prophetic voice of Haggai and Sikarai encouraged the exiles to continue their reconstruction work. When the exiles followed, they were filled with hope. The glory of God would soon fill the temple. How can you serve as an example of others God's work? Ayan, bigla tayong binalikan. Di ba? How can you serve as an example to others for God's work? Is your vision of God's work clear so that you might become an exceptional example? Yun yung challenge. Itong mag-asawa, anong, challenge, anong example nila? Habitat uh, for, for people, para sa tirahan nila. Eh tayo naman kaya. Ano kaya ang pwedeng gawin? Pwede ba tayo maging example for God's work? Maliwanag ba sa atin yung ating gagawin? Verse 14b, The elders and the prophets, they finished building the temple according to the command of the God of Israel and the decrees of Cyrus, Darius, Artaxerxes, kings of Persia. Ayan, natapos na nila. At itong... Uh, Itong mga tatlong hari nang binabanggit ngayon. Alam na alam na natin yung ginawa ni Cyrus. Yan si Darius. Alam na alam na. Ano naman kaya yung ginawa ni Artaxerxes? King of Persia. In 457 BC, Artaxerxes the first, maraming Artaxerxes dyan eh. The first, the second, the third. Post the reconstruction effort of Jerusalem. He tasked Ezra with visiting the city on his behalf. Yan. Yun naman yung ginawa niya. Anong ginawa ni Artaxerxes? Inutusan niya si Ezra. E si Ezra na ngayon yung second wave of returnee. Returnee. Babalik. Ay, babalik na si Ezra. Siya, yan yung 
ginawa ni Acta Circes para tignan kung ano na nangyari doon. Verse 15, The temple was completed on the third day of the month, Adar, in the sixth year of the reign of King Darius. Diyan na natapos. The year was 516 B.C. Natapos yung second temple uh, during the reign of King Darius. Ito yung uh, importanting uh, information dito. 70 years after the temple was destroyed by Babylonians, it was rebuilt. 70 years mula nung sinira ng Babylon yung templo. 70 years after. This is now the, the rebuilding, the reconstruction was completed, 516 B.C. Then the people of Israel, the priests, the Levites, and the rest of the exiles celebrated the dedication of the house of God with joy. Ito na ngayon. So, yung mga tao ng Israel, sino-sino yung mga composition ng yan? Yung pare, yung mga libita, libita at yung mga ibang yung mga exiles. Yan. Acts of dedication were central throughout Israel's history. Ganun na yung his, yung istorya, yung mga nakaraan, yung kasaysayan ng Israel, palaging may dedication yan. Nung nung natapos ni Solomon, ni Haring Solomon yung yung templo, yung first temple, may mga laking malaking dedication ceremony. Malaking malaki. Gayon din ito. Natapos nila yung reconstruction so there will be a dedication. The key word there is that it will be a joyously dedicated. Joyous. It will be a great joy. Masayang masaya sila sa kanilang dedication ceremony. For the dedication of this house of God, they offered 100 bulls, 200 rams, 400 male lambs. Yan yung mga kinatay nila. Ito sa, sa reconstruction. Ha? Ito sa second temple. Sandang toro. 200 rams. 400 lambs. Yan. The offered sacrifice, sacrifices were much smaller in number than those offered in Solomon's temple. Yan. Ikumpara nga natin. Doon sa Solomon's temple, the first temple, first king. Tingnan natin kung ilan yung kanilang mga, mga ini-offer. And Solomon offered the sacrifice of peace offerings which he offered to the Lord 22,000 oxen. <laughs> Yung uh, hundreds lang doon kabila eh. Ngayon, thousand na. 120,000 sheep. Yan. Eh, tingnan nga natin yung gamit. Bakit bulls? Bull. The law required bulls to be offered during the burnt offering. Ah, yun pala eh. Yung toro para sa burnt offering. In addition... Bulls were offered for a part of sin offering. So, yung toro para sa burn offering, yung sinusunog at saka sa sin offering. Ay yung ram, ano naman yan? Sacrifices of ram was required during guilt offerings. Guilt offerings naman. Rams, rams naman yung kanilang uh, sinasacrifice. Lambs. Ito naman yung lambs. The fellowship offering at saka sin offering. Yan. Yun yung ang ginagamit ay lambs. Eh, fellowship offering. Dahil malambot yan eh. Isang linggo silang kumakain dun eh. Fellowship offering. That the animals were offered at the dedication of the rebuilt temple reflects two major points. Ano kaya yon? Ano kaya yung kahalagahan nitong mga offerings, animals, animals being offered? Sabi nito, two major points. Tingnan natin. First, It showed a concern to uphold the stipulations God required of the people. Yan. Concerns to uphold. Susundin ang mga kautusan ng Diyos doon sa tao. Ano yung mga kautusan ng Diyos? Ano ang gusto ng tao? Ha? Nag-o-offer kayo. Ibig sabihin ay gusto ninyong sundin ang mga utos ng Diyos. Yun yung significance. Second significance The offering followed precedent made by previous generations. Well, uh, significance ay dahil yun na yung kasaysayan ng Israel. Yun na yung mga kaugalian ng Israel. At pinagpapatuloy nila yon dito. Yun yung significance ng offering 
animals for sacrifice. Ritual purification and repentance were prerequisite for Israel to offer proper worship to God. Bago gamitin yung templo, bago gamitin proper worship to God, bago gamitin, kinakailangan muna ng ritual purification and repentance. Required yun. Yung templo, yung first templo, hindi muna nila ginamit yun hanggat hindi nagkaroon ng uh, ritual purification and repentance. So, ganun din ito. The repatriated tribes experienced joy as they offered sacrifices before God. Ibang-iba ang kanilang katuwaan. Ibang naranasan nilang tuwa noong kanilang ginagawa itong purification right and repentance na ito. 17b. And as a sin offering for Israel, 12 male goats, one for each of the tribes of Israel. Yan. Tingnan ninyo, ang bumalik lamang ay doon sa mga na-exile, in-exile ng Babylon. And these were only the two tribes. Tribes of Benjamin and Judah. Yung ibang tribe, the, the northern tribe, nauna silang na-exile ng mga Assyrians. But, but, doon sa dedication, kasama yung ibang mga tribes. Twelve male goats for each tribe. A sin offering of male goats purify the people of their sins of ritual violation. violation. As not all tribes had returned from the exile offering, and it, the, the offerings anticipated a reunited nation. Yun daw ang ibig sabihin niyan. Bakit labing dalawa? Eh, siyempre, inaalaala pa rin nila yung kanilang mga uh, ibang kapatid, ibang tribo. And eventually, they are anticipating a reunion, a one nation, katulad nung, nung panahon ni, ni Haring David at ni Haring Solomon na ang Israel ay iisa. During exile, the Jews had been without proper accommodation to make offerings. Their act of purification acknowledged decades of impure and sinful acts. Yan daw. Yung purification right na to, naalaala nila, inaamin nila na sila ay, in, sila ay marami silang kasalanan. Sila ay impure. Marami silang sinful acts. They acknowledge. And, there, and that is the purpose of this purification. Kinakailangan ma-purify sila, hindi lang yung templo, pati yung tao. As a new temple was dedicated, the people had a new start before God. For ancient Israel, God's presence was made known in the temple. However, that presence now resides in a different temple. Yeah. Medyo inirelate ngayon ito sa New Testament. Inirelate. Ancient Israel, kaya in-underline ko ancient Israel, the presence of God, they felt the presence of God in the temple. Pero dun sa New Testament, bago na yung ina-address na temple. Sino na yung mga temple? His people. Tingnan nga natin mga, mga scripture dyan, 1 Corinthians. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? Tayo na ngayon yung templo. Tayo na ngayon, personal na, na relate na experience natin ang presence ng Diyos. Verse 18, And they installed the priests in their divisions, and the Levites in their groups for the service of God at Jerusalem, according to what is written in the book of Moses. So, na-purify, at na-install na yung mga Levites at yung mga, mga pare. Ano ang trabaho ng mga to? O review. The rebuilt temple required a new labor. The priests and the Levites were tasked to care for the building and overseeing the sacrificial, sacrificial rituals. Yun, yun yung trabaho nila. Yung pare at mga Levites. Ah, ayusin. Ah, sila ang in-charge dun sa building. At sila rin ang mga ngasiwa ng mga sacrificial rituals. Kaya pag may rit- Meron kang sacrifice, bibigay mo doon sa pare, sila nang bahala. The renewed focus on worship highlighted the importance of the priesthood for Israel. Even in regard to physical health. Yan. Sabi rito, 
Hindi lang doon sa gawain sa simbahan, hindi lang sila ta in charge sa templo. Sila rin ang asakop din nila yung physical health and well-being of the people. Kaya nga ka panahon ni Jesus. Oh. Wala ka ng leprosy. O pumunta ka sa pare para yung pare magdi-declare ka na wala ka ng leprosy. Ganun yan. Sakop ng pare yun. Physical health and well-being. Verse 9. On the 14th day of the first month, the exiles celebrated the Passover. Yan. Ito na yung celebration ng Passover. The Passover. Israel was to remember God's deliverance of their nation from oppression in Egypt. Ano ba yung Passover? Oh, review ulit. Ano ba yung Passover? Nung nandun pa sila sa Egypto, the Pharaoh does not allow them to live. And then, there will be a last plague. The firstborn son will die. So, yung mga Israelita, mayroong instruction sa kanila. Maglagay kayo ng dugo dan, doon sa poste ng pintuan. Uh, uh, blood of lamb on the doorpost of your doors. Bakit? So that the angel of death will pass over. It will pass over the house where there is blood on the doorpost. It will pass over. Yung mga, yung mga bahay na walang, walang dugo, the, the angel of death will not pass over. What will happen? All the firstborn son, tao man yan o animal, mamamatay. That is pass over. So, inaalaala nila yung gabing yun. Proper observation required that it began on the fourth day of Abib. Dapat dyan daw gagawin yan sa on the month of Aviv, on the 14th month. The priests and Levites had purified themselves. Yan, yeah, pinurify na sila. Ha? Nilinis yung mga priests and Levites para so they will be ceremonially clean. Then the Levites slaughtered the Passover lamb for all the exiles, for their relatives, the priests, and for themselves. So, yun na ngayon yung ginawa ng mga Levites. Pagkatapos nila ma-purify, para kasama sa cleansing, sila na ngayon ang pwede ng uh, mga siwa. Sila na yun ang pumapatay doon sa mga Passover lamb. Earlier descriptions of the observance of Passover do not mention priest. Sabi dyan, nung una, eh, yung sino yung mga kumakatay ng mga Passover lamb? Mga elders. Elders of the community. But later on, dyan, sa, sa book ni Hezekiah, dun sa 2 Chronicles, etc. Later on, ay King Hezekiah and Josiah, dun sa panahon nila, the Levites slaughtered the Passover lamb. And the practice continued in post-exilic Israel. So mula doon, mula doon kay King Hezekiah at Josiah, ah, mga priests and Levites na ang nangangasiwa doon sa mga pagkatay sa Passover lamb. Verse 21, So the Israelites who had returned from the exile ate together with all who separated themselves from the unclean practices of their Gentile neighbors. Yon. Sino yung mga sino yung mga nagparticipate doon sa celebration? Yun yung mga exiles. At with all who had separated separated themselves from the unclean practices. Sino kaya itong mga ito? Tingnan natin 'yan. Proper observance of Passover required eating roasted lamb seasoned with bitter herbs and bread made without yeast. O yan yung yan yung uh, kakainin roasted lamb may mapait may mapait na herbs at saka dapat ay walang yeast yung kakainin nila sino yung who had separated themselves yun yung kanina dalawang school of thought first it might refer to members of the northern kingdom of Israel or Israelites 
who did not experience exile. Ah, maaring ito ay mga Jews na hindi kasali doon sa mga na-exile. Naiwan sila. May mga, hindi naman lahat na-exile. Eh. May mga naiwan. May mga naiwan doon sa northern tribes. May mga naiwan doon sa southern tribes. Maaring sila yung sumama sa celebration. Sabi rin dito, more likely however, they were non-Israelites who choose to renounce idolatry and return away from the unclean practices. Pero sabi niya, mas malamang daw na itong mga sumali doon sa celebration ay mga non-Israelite pero tinalikuran nila na yung idolatry at sumamba na sila sa Diyos ng Israel kay Yahweh. Non-Jews or Gentiles could participate in Israel's blessing. Binanggit yan sa Deuteronomy ni Moses. Tingnan nga natin. The prophet Isaiah envisioned the future where this accord, Gentiles were admitted as God's people. That is in Isaiah. Verse 22. For seven days, they celebrated with joy the festival of unleavened bread because the Lord had filled them with joy. Pitong araw silang nagkakasayahan. Yun yung festival of the unleavened bread. Pitong araw. Pagkatapos ng Passover, isang araw lang yung uh, Passover. Pagkatapos ng pitong araw silang magsasaya. Yeah? With joy. Pitong araw, kumakain sila doon. The one day celebration of Passover preceded a week long observance of the festival of the unleavened bread. Verse 22b. By changing the attitude of the king of Assyria so that he assisted them in the work and the house of God, the God of Israel. Yan. Biglang may binanggit na king of Assyria. Tingnan natin yung paliwanag dito. The mention of Assyria is puzzling inclusion. Bakit? Nakakapuzzle. The reign of Assyria ended almost a century prior to this text. Tapos na yung Assyria. Eh. Nasaan ba yung istorya ng Assyria? Assyria uh, invaded the northern kingdom bago yung southern kingdom. Assyria muna, nilusob, and they exiled the northern kingdom. After that, Sino? Yung Babylon, oh, inaway ang Assyria, natalo ang Assyria. Babylon naman, they, they exiled the southern kingdom. Ito na ngayon. Tapos, Persia naman, ginira ang Babylon, talo naman ang Babylon. Persia ngayon ang, ang uh, uh, powerful. So, ano itong sinasabi na, anong kinalaman na itong king of Assyria? The best explanation The te- text describes the king to remind readers of their history. Exile had begun with Assyria. Ito ngayon ang paliwanag. Dahil yung exile, nagumpisa sa Assyria. Nag- na-exile sila. And therefore, yung pag-return, pag-return ng nila ay uh, uh, kagagawan ng Diyos. Kagagawan ng Diyos. Ang Diyos ay ginamit ang Assyria so to to punish the disobedience of the northern kingdom. Ginamit ng Diyos yung Babylon to punish the, the southern kingdom because of their disobedience and idolatry. All in all, all in all, in everything, God is in control. God used the pagan rulers, including the king of Assyria. Yan yung ibig sabihin nito. So, it is looking at Israel as one unit, one whole unit, hindi na yung Northern Kingdom, Southern Kingdom, etc. Conclusion, building a joyful community. In 1942, the Gestapo had shut down numerous underground seminaries. Continuation nito nung introduction natin kanina. Kasi, including Finkenwald. Ito yung binanggit kanina dun sa introduction. This was in Poland. This was in Poland. Oh, sino yung nag, nagtayo noon? Si Bonhoeffer. At ang sabi doon, doon sa last comment doon, they were able to de- develop church leaders. At ang nangyari ay, Bonhoeffer's former students were scattered around the continent. They were scattered around the continent. Ang term dito ay diaspora or diaspora. The scattering. The scattering. 
They were faithful to their calling to serve the underground church. Yan yun eh. They were still faithful. Nung isinara, ba? They are still faithful. Meantime, Bonhoeffer wrote a series of encouraging letters calling the leaders to embrace joy. Ito ngayon. They are still faithful. But ang intention ni Bonhoeffer sa kanyang pagsusulat ay manit, manatili kayong natutuwa doon sa paglilingkod sa Diyos. Suffering and indifference was prevalent. Finding joy was a challenge for these leaders. Yung ka, sa gitna ng kahirapan, sa gitna ng, ng uh, indif, indifference, ayaw sa kanila ng mga tao, sa gitna niyan, you have your faith. And therefore, hindi maging madali ang maging masaya. The temple's dedication and celebratory feast invited exiles to express proper joy toward God. Once again, the people could experience right relationship with God, a true cause for joy and celebration. Once again, the people could experience right relationship with God, yung tamang relasyon sa Diyos. At ito ang tunay na dahilan kung bakit tayo ay dapat magsaya at mag-celebrate. Our community of faith may be driven to build new buildings and establish new programs. But our primary challenge when building is to respond joyfully. Bottom line ng pagsisilbi sa Diyos, dapat masaya. Dapat nag-uumapaw ang ating kasayahan. God's faithfulness to us demands such a response. Nakakasiguro tayo ng katapatan ng Diyos. Therefore, dapat ang ating response ay maging masaya dahil matatag ang pangako ng Diyos. From that foundation, we are called to build ministries as an outpouring of God's faithfulness. Ultimately, this become a sign for the world to see. Magiging example tayo, magiging example tayo ng mga tao sa labas. Masaya tayo sa ating paglilingkod sa Diyos. God's people live in joyous and celebratory hope. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for this lesson. Thank you for teaching us that you are in control in whatever time, including our time today. Teach us that whatever are the circumstances we are in, we should fill our heart with joy in serving you, in doing ministries for you, so that people around us will see the benefit of being a citizen of heaven. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so last slide. Lesson number four of the third quarter. The theme, uh, the title is Free Because of the Lord. It will be Deuteronomy chapter 8. Magandang umaga po at pagpalain kayo ng Diyos. Music